Thank you for checking out our sermon here at New Grace. We are excited that you came across this message and are tuning in. It is our prayer that it is a blessing to you. We just want to make you aware of a couple things before we get to the message. First, we would love to connect with you. You can find us on Facebook at New Grace BC. Also, be sure to check out our website, reachingroanoke.com. There, you can find out more about who we are and where we are going as a church. Again, thank you for checking out our sermon here at New Grace. Please let us know of any questions you may have or any way that we can help you and your family. Enjoy the message. We have a lot to worry about in our world. Uh, that's, just, that's just a fact. Whether we're talking about you're watching the news, which will always make you worry, uh, whether you go to the doctor, which will make you worry, whatever it is, we all have things to worry about. We worry about our kids being safe. We worry about them getting to college or finding a job. According to a new report, uh, the top things that people worry about are work, money, being late, a loved one's health, your own health, relationships, missing a bus or a plane, not waking up to the alarm, our fashion sense, which I thought was the funniest, and our family's safety. So most of us are worried about whether we're wearing the right jeans for the season or whatever. But anxiety, it's a huge, and sometimes it may require a doctor's help or, or a psychologist or a therapist, and there's, there's no shame in that. Uh, I've heard preachers before talk about uh, people getting help with medicine and, and kind of almost shaming them. And like you're just not trusting God enough, and that's not true. God gave us doctors and medicine, so there's no shame in needing a little help. That's, 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 that's fine to admit those things. Uh, but anxiety is also a spiritual battle, and Jesus gave us some wisdom on how to recognize it and also how to overcome it. So look in your Bibles in Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse number 25. Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount here is preaching, and he says, Therefore... I say unto you, take no life, what you shall eat, or what you shall drink. Of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which is today and is tomorrow cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Therefore, take, no, there, take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Now, the word anxious, the Greek word for anxious is mereno, and it appears six times in, this, in these verses. It's translated in the English into the word thought. So when the Bible says, take no thought for, he is saying, don't be anxious. And it means the, the word in the Greek literally means to be seized by the throat or pulled apart in different directions. Worry, it pulls us apart and it chokes out our joy. The, the word actually was used in other uh, Greek, uh, Greek literature to describe how wolves would kill sheep. They would grab them by the throat and then rip them apart. That's what the Bible is saying. That's what Jesus is saying, worry and anxiety do to us. And if you've ever suffered with anxiety, you understand, you feel like sometimes you can't breathe, like you just you don't know what's going on. You can't really gather your thoughts to go, know which direction to go, because you're being, you're being pulled apart and you're being choked by anxiety and worry. So when, when Jesus tells us not to worry, he does it in three different verses. And the thing we need to understand is each one, these verses, they're not suggestions. Jesus isn't saying, you really, you really shouldn't worry. Jesus has given us a command, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Because he has things in control. So these commands, they help us deal with one of the most common sins 
that Christians deal with, worry and anxiety. So we're going to see tonight how worry and anxiety hurt us and what we're supposed to do to help us overcome them to face them. Number one, the Bible tells us that worry is a waste. Worry is a waste. Back in verse number 25, <clears throat> uh, the Bible says, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, Than they. So, in order to get our eyes off of ourselves, which is what worry is, we're focused on ourselves, Jesus says, Look at God's creation. Look at how God takes care of everything He's created. He takes care of the animals, He takes care of the, the world, He takes care of everything, and you are much. You know, that question there, it's not, Are you not better? It's not a rhetorical question. He is saying, literally in the Greek, You are entirely better than anything else God's created. Mankind was the pinnacle of God's creation. Of course, it was woman, but we're going to say mankind. Mankind was the pinnacle of God's creation. And God created the world for us to enjoy. He created us to fellowship and to worship Him. You know, there, of course, I know Disney sells us different, but all dogs don't go to heaven. Just one, mine. Uh, but all the other dogs don't. You know, all cats... All cats go to hell. I mean, that's just, that's scriptural. Cats burn in hell. Go to hell. And so, uh, but that, hey, the Bible says that, the Lord, that Satan's like a lion. Lions are cats. Boom. Cats are of the devil. So there we go. I just theologized you. Uh, but God made creation for our enjoyment, for our pleasure, for us to, to, to enjoy and, 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 and look at and, and awe at. He created us for his pleasure. So he says he takes care of all the things he created for you. What makes you think he won't take care of you when you were created for him? You just look at the birds. They don't work They don't work a job and God takes care of them. Why do you think God won't take care of you too? So Jesus is telling us that who we are in Christ is more important than what we wear or what we can eat or what we can drink. What happens when we get our, our eyes off of God and we place them on ourselves. And so to get our eyes off of ourselves tells us, look at how God's creation works. God takes care of everything he created, and he created you. He, God takes care of everything. That's why worry is a waste. It is thinking that God won't do for you what he's already promised to do. We're wasting our time. We're wasting our energy worrying that God's not going to keep his promises. So worry is a waste. Second thing, number two, worry doesn't work. Worry doesn't work. Look at verse 27. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? Not only is worry a waste of time, worry doesn't work. The word here in the Greek, it means length of age. I've always been, you know, heard preachers say, it means, you know, you can't even grow an inch taller if you think about it hard enough. It doesn't mean height. It means length of age. So what Jesus is saying is, you worrying about everything you're worrying about, you're not going to add to your life. As a matter of fact, you're going to take away from it. Worry doesn't add, and it doesn't just add length of days to you, it doesn't let add quality to your life. It steals your joy. It steals your satisfaction. So your life is getting shorter because of worry and less joyful because of it. So Jesus is saying worrying can't make your life longer. Anxiety can give you a lot of things. It can give you migraines. It can give you ulcers. But it can't give you length of life. In fact, it shortens it. Worrying and anxiety, it sends adrenaline to your body, and it keeps you in a constant state of fight or flight. It increases your heart rate. It dilates your blood vessels. It, it makes your breath become shorter. It makes, it, uh, makes you have trouble concentrating. And living in this state for any length of time, it damages your heart. It, over length of time, it causes heart attack. It causes stroke. It causes all kinds of health issues because we are worrying. Worry kills. In simple, Proverbs even tells us this. Proverbs 12, 25. Heaviness in the heart of a man maketh it stoop. An anxious heart weighs you down 
and it doesn't change anything. You know, often we, we worry about what happen. Several years ago, an Oxford University professor did a study about the things that people worry about. And he found that 92% of the things people worry about never happen. So we spend 92% of our worry time worrying about things that never happen anyway. It's a waste of our energy. It's a waste of our time. But what about that other 8%? Man, we got to worry about that other 8%, right? No, because Jesus says don't worry about that 8% either. Because those things, when we worry, we're saying that God can't take care of us. When we worry, we are saying that our problems are bigger than God. Worry is a waste. Worry doesn't work. Number three, worry causes us to waver. <clears throat> Look at verse number 28. It says, And why take ye thought for, your, for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin, neither do they say, neither. And yet Solomon in all his glory. For if God so clothe the ground, shall not he much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? And again, when you look in the Greek, you know, we look at it and say, oh, he's just saying our faith is small. In the Greek, it's literally translated, you have no faith. So you're worried about all these things because you have no faith in verse 1. Therefore, take no thought. thought. Want to eat or drink or wear because again, Jesus points to what he's created. He says, look at the flowers. Look how beautiful they are. Look, they don't, they don't work for me. They don't worship me. And I, I dress them and I take care of them better than Solomon with all of his money. Have you ever seen a, a worried lily or a, a stressed out uh, marigold? Of course not. They don't worry about, the only thing they worry about is if April's going to take them home and kill them. <laughs> so they just don't want her picking them up at the store. But they don't worry about everything else because they know God is going to take care of them. Jesus says when we worry about God taking care of us, we, 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 Jesus says when we worry about God taking care of us, we, because he, we shouldn't worry about why God, ah. I messed it up in the sentence and I messed it up in my head. When we, I'm not. <laughs> Jesus says we shouldn't worry about God taking care of us because, again, he takes care of all of his creation. And when we do worry about that, it's because we have no faith. Our fears, our worry, our anxiety, it has to do with our lack of faith. Jesus said God will do more for us for the rest of creation. So the way to deal with anxiety is by battling our unbelief. David said in Psalm 56, 3, What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. The most basic battle of our life is a battle to believe that God is in control and God's going to keep his promises because unbelief is the root cause of anxiety. And so when we have anxiety, we are to focus on God. Fourth thing that anxiety does, worry wipes out our witness. Look again at verse 30, 31. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. So again, Jesus gives us a command not to worry, but he, he gives another reason why. Because the unsaved world, they spend their time worrying about how they're going to pay their bills. Worrying about how they're going to clothe their children. Worrying about how they're going to get food for the next day. They worry about these things because they don't have God's promises that he's going to take care of them. And he says, when you worry about those things, you're acting just like the unsaved world. And the unsaved world looks at you and thinks, well, if they're worrying about those things too, what good does their God do for them? We are damaging our witness for Christ. They don't, the unsaved world do that, they don't believe in God. So they, have, they believe they have to take care of themselves. So when we worry, we are acting just like the unsaved and that destroys our witness against him. Because here's the thing, worry is rebellion against God because when we, when we worry, we're really saying God isn't powerful enough to take care of us. 
When we worry, we are assuming responsibility for the things that God never intended for us to take responsibility for. Anxiety is atheism in action. And verse 32 tells us that God knows what we need. We are to take comfort in the fact that our Heavenly Father knows exactly what we need. He knows, he knows about your marriage problems. He knows about the bills you're concerned about paying by the end of the month. He knows every fear that you have. He said it best, it said best in 1 Peter 7, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. God loves us and wants to take care of us. So he tells us, let me worry about giving you all your needs and you don't have to worry about it because he loves us and cares for us. Anxiety does a lot of terrible things to the believer. It's a waste. It doesn't work. It causes us to waver. It ruins our witness. But how do we deal with it? So Jesus not only warns us about the dangers of it, he also tells us how to overcome it. So number five there, how do we overcome it? Put God first. Put God first. Look at verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. What things? The things, the things we're losing sleep about. The things we're allowing to damage our health. The things we're allowing to damage our relationships. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All those things shall be added unto you. Now verse 33 begins with the word but. It is to show the contrast between how non-believers live and how believers in Jesus should live. Instead of seeking all the things that we worry about, we're to seek God. We're to pursue God. Seek means to have an intense, single-minded focus to go after, to strive for, to pursue. Now, that usually describes the things we worry about. That usually describes the things that, that keeping, her up, keeping us up at night. But it should be describing how we treat God. We should be singly focused and singly minded on pursuing God. And this, these verses, these uh, verbs are in the present imperative tense, tense, which means that the cure for anxiety is to make a daily choice to go after God. It's not a one-time thing. It's not coming to the altar one time and saying, God, I'm going to put you first and then never do it. It is sometimes many times a day. Saying, God, there are things that are trying to steal my focus off of you. I'm not going to worry about them. I'm going to chase everything. Them. Lord, I just want to be with you. I just want to pursue you because I know in your word you said, if I pursue you, if I seek you, if I follow you, then you'll take care of all the other things I have to worry about. You'll take care of all the things I'm striving for. So we need to stop making material things our focus and instead make God and his kingdom our focus. The reason so many of us struggle with anxiety and worry is because we are it causes anxiety, it causes worry. And now this promise, it's a powerful promise. Seek God first, and everything you worry about and everything you need will be taken care of and provided for you, but it's a conditional promise. If we seek Him first, then all the things will be added. So if you want to come, overcome anxiety, then go after God. How else would we overcome anxiety? Place your future in God's hands. Place your future in God's hands. Look at verse 34. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought of the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Is by saying, don't worry about tomorrow, because tomorrow will have its own issues to deal with. Now too many of us, we are free with fear and anxiety over what might happen tomorrow or next week or next month or next year. Lamentations 3 tells us that the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because they are new every great as I feel faith at this point. God is able today and God is able In tomorrow, God already knows. God's already got it in control. God's sovereign over all of it. Don't worry about it because it is all in God's control. But practically, how can we overcome anxiety? What can we do now besides just these, you know, put God first and, and put your future in God? What practically can we do? 
Well, first of all, confess worry as a sin. Don't make excuses for it. Anxiety and worry is a sin. Because we've gotten command after command after command, not just in these verses and other verses, to not worry. And if we do it, we are disobeying the command of God. So if you struggle with worry and anxiety, confess it as a sin. And God says if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So don't make any excuses. Worry is a sin because it replaces God in your life and makes you live like God doesn't exist. It is a lack of faith in anything done without faith. So confess that worry is a sin. So secondly, pray with thanksgiving. Our lives, you know, the Bible says multiple times, pray without ceasing. Men are talking about pray. We are talking And we need to, our lives need to be saturated with prayer. And if we are praying, thanking God for all the things he's done for us, we're going to realize we don't have the, those things we worry about are, are, are pointless to worry about. Because we, we remember how good God has been to us. And look, I'll be honest with you, especially if you struggle with these things, your prayer time, when you wake up in the morning, your prayer time, instead of asking God to help you all, your prayer time should be mainly or mostly or totally just thank God for what he's done. Well, God ain't done nothing for me. <laughs> he's done more for you than you could ever imagine. And just begin listing the things God has had for you. Well, I'm worried about my health, but you're healthy now. Well, I'm worried about my bills being paid, but they're paid now. You know, payday was always funny for us because we get paid, and then the very next, you know, the next day it's all gone. But our bills are paid. We got a roof over our head. The van's still got, you know, still running. Even though Parker likes to play ping pong in the driveway with the cars. We've got, you know, if you start listing the things, you, it's easy to list the things you don't have that you worry about. But start listing the things that God has given you, the blessings you have, the, and, and start thanking God. And when you, when you thank God for all the things he's given you, you begin to realize, I don't, I don't really have anything to worry about. I don't really have to worry about these because God's been so good to me before. Continue to be good for me. Thirdly, study the Bible. The Bible has more verses that deal with the topic of anxiety and worry than these. And you need to find them. Look, Today, in our society today, our culture today, you have the greatest access to the Word of God than we've ever had. You know, before, if you wanted to really study the Bible, you had to get a Strong's Concordance. I've got one in my, in my office. It's like that thick. And you got to flip through and find the right Greek word on, and then look up all the ones that go. And it was a lot of work. And so you didn't really want to do it. Now, it's just on your smartphone. You know what? what I, Google. Google's wicked. No, Google versus with anxiety and look them up. I mean, you, just, you don't even got to do the work. Other people do it for you. You just read it. So find the verses, read them, memorize them, study them, what context of the end were they really teaching us, meditate on them, and fill your heart with the Word of God so that when you have these issues come up, you can turn to them, the Holy Spirit will bring them to your mind, and you cannot sin against God. So when worry comes... You can fight it. Here's just a couple. Philippians 4, 6. Of course, you all probably know this one. Be careful for nothing. Now, that word careful means anxious. So be anxious. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. So don't worry about it. Just pray about it and thank God for everything he's done. Pray and thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. When we don't worry and we give it to God and we spend time thanking God for all he's done, we receive the peace of God. Here's another one, Romans 5. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into his grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation work at patience and and experience hope, and hope make it not a shame, because the love of God is brought in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. So here's Paul saying, hey, don't even worry about the problems you have, because the problems you have are a gift from God to give you what you need to serve God. Here's one, Zephaniah 3.16. The book of Zephaniah? Yeah. And today shall it be said to Jerusalem, Fear thou not, and to Zion let thine hands be thy God, in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. 
He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. Why are we worrying? Because God's, God's singing over us. And look, God's got a good voice. He ain't like me singing over you. God is singing over you with praises and glory. God's word is given to help us overcome any struggle that we face, including anxiety. Find help in the word of God. And finally, change your perspective. Instead of focusing on all the things that you think or the things that you think might go wrong, look at all the things that you have, all the things in your life that are going right, and understand they're doing that and you have because of God. You have God as your Father. You have Jesus as your Savior, you have the Holy Spirit as your Comforter. And even if your world's falling apart, you know what? You have a home in heaven one day. You have security in your salvation. You have access to the Creator and the universe. Don't focus on what could be. Focus on what is. Now, anxiety is a problem that most of us face from time to time, and some of us may face it more than others. And again, I don't want to come across, it's not an easy fix. You know, these are all, these are easy points. No, these, this is not, you have to retrain yourself from worry to praise. And it's going to take time. You're going to find yourself going back. And just, I got to, got to thank God. So it's not an easy fix. And if you, you may need more help than I can give you. Again, there's no shame in that. Do what you have to do. Get the peace that you need. But what Jesus tells us to try to overcome anxiety.